Let's give you a tip for every single super troop in Clash of Clans. We now have six super troops, and I want to make sure that you know exactly how to use them. Welcome back to the channel then guys, I'm your host Judo Sloth. Today we are giving you a tip for every super troop. This is in my A Tip For Everything series. We did a tip for every troop, every spell, every hero. Granted, we might have to go back over some of them due to the wonderful update. But for this one, we will start with the Super Barbarian, move to the Super Giant. You get the idea. We will go through every single one of them. And if you do enjoy my content, I'd recommend subscribing. I bring educational but entertaining clash of clans videos and you can turn on the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any of them also very quickly if you want to support me in game you can do so in your settings more settings and using code judo before making any purchases but let's go ahead and give you your tip for the super barbarian first now the first thing to mention when we start discussing the super barbarian is that some super troops are better than others. And the Super Barbarian, it is not one of my favorites. However, it can be relatively good for funneling your troops. They have the enraged bonus. You can get down buildings very easily on the outside. The Super Barbarian costs five housing space and similar to the Raged Barbarian of the Builder Base, its special ability is being enraged. However, it is only for eight seconds. But this makes it ideal for sniping off defenses on the outside of the base. And another beautiful thing about the Super Barbarian is that you can send multiple of them in. It is not like the Baby Dragon where if they get too close they lose their enraged bonus. The Super Barbarian can chug away irrespective of how many you deploy. But this is where the issue lies. You can only unlock one super troop at a time and I rarely recommend the super barbarian. Yes, if it is the only super troop that you can actually unlock, then it might be of benefit. But whether you are farming, whether you are doing war attacks, generally speaking, as you will see as we move through the video, there are better options. But this video is a tip for every single super troop so I will be sure to give you my advice on each and every one of them. The other thing to know about the Super Barbarians is because they don't lose their enraged bonus as they clump together, you can actually send a big pack of them into the base and as long as you can path them through the base, they actually do pretty well. They will take down the defenses very, very quickly. However, from my experience, I have found that the Yeti Smash, the Pekka Smash, they're just better than the Super Barbarians, but it's also something you could consider. We now move on to the Super Giants, and I have some pretty cool stats and comparisons for you for the Super Giants, but I do want to let you know real quick that if you do need to come back to this video at a later date to see tips for whatever Super Troop it is, I've put video chapters in it for you, so you should be able to skip ahead. There's timestamps in the description as well so that you can easily find it. But the Super Giant is relatively easy to explain in terms of it is a meatier version of the Giant. It's a Super Giant. Now, the regular Giant is 5 housing space. The Super Giant is 10 housing space. But you get more than twice the hit points in a Super Giant. Obviously, you do have to commit the Dark Elixir to it in the first place. So if you are planning a strategy with Giants to push into the base, consider the Super Giants because you will get more than twice the hit points and also they do 4 times damage against walls. Now, how about comparing this to the Ice Golem? The Ice Golem is... 15 troop capacity obviously you get the freezing effect which is its big advantage but it actually does not have the same hit points a super giant at maximum level has 4200 whereas an ice golem only has 3400 so if you are using the troop for tanking specifically the super giant will be your best option and that's not to mention when it does four times damage against walls now there is a little bit of a caveat to that in that the super giants only are attacking defenses so that means they might go for the wrong piece of wall and that's where 
I would advise you to always consider using a jump spell if you do want them to go to a certain area of the base. So we've explained when the super giant might be important if you just need it for tanking. We've explained that you might have to take jump spells to guide them through the base, but what kind of strategy could you use the super giants with? Well, who remembers the HGHB attack? That's what I found them beneficial with. If you can get the super giants and bowlers into the center, then you can just easily send Hog Riders or the Royal Champion around the outside of the base to cut out the rest of the defenses when you have taken out the core. That is what I have found the Super Giants to be best with, but let's move on to one of my favorite Super Troops in that of the Sneaky Goblins. One of the best uses of the Sneaky Goblins is to take down the Town Hall. Now, people will send the Sneaky Goblins inside a Battle Blimp to get to the Town Hall. Remember, the Town Hall is is now a storage and the goblins attack resource buildings so they will take it down straight away at higher level even if it is not activated they will attack it but i want to give you tips around the troop composition for the goblins now you may need a rage spell depending on the defenses if you are just farming you can probably just put sneaky goblins in they will take the town hall if you are doing a lava loon attack you can put a lava hound in there with up to five sneaky goblins to take the town hall and you essentially have a free lava hound for your attack but what happens if you see a base with gaps around the town hall what this is is the defender getting wise to the sneaky goblins and putting small bombs there in order to take out the sneaky goblins before they get the town hall you can counteract this with barbarians inside your clan castle in a mixture so you have barbarians the Sneaky Goblins for the Town Hall. Notice how the Sneaky Goblins can also take the Clan Castle and the DE Storage, anything inside there. But my recommendation, if you are a Town Hall 13, is to take five Sneaky Goblins, six Barbarians, three minions and a yeti. The sneaky goblins get the town hall, the yeti gets good value if the yeti mites, the barbarians are to set off the bombs, and the minions are to distract any scatter shot in the area. So the scatter shots will attack the air troops and that of the minions and miss the goblins. Many thanks to my good friend Eve Maxi for teaching me about the minions. A couple of other really quick tips for the sneaky goblins before we get to the super wall breakers. You can use them for funneling on the outside of the base if you are attacking the resource buildings now presumably your sneaky goblins are maxed level and you're going up against a regularly upgraded base you will require one sneaky goblin per minor pump and two sneaky goblins to take out one of the storages also be on the lookout for exposed town halls and clan castles to the side of the base it does happen and you can send in just a couple of sneaky goblins to snipe the town hall or the clan castle you are likely to need four to five however i would probably just take five just in case and also have in the back of your mind that there could be traps in that area as well the super wall breakers are without a doubt one of my favorite super troops and one that i would recommend you use for war particularly if you're doing a queen charge they can be incredibly good for me, they are on par with the Sneaky Goblins as the best super troops in the game, depending on your purpose, whether it be the Town Hall or to get access into the base. Be sure to let me know your favorite and if there are any tips you feel I missed for any of the super troops. However, the Super Wall Breaker, it's exactly the same as the regular Wall Breaker in that it breaks walls, but it costs eight troop capacity and this is where it really shines because it will go off irrespective. It's very predictable. The regular wall breakers, you've got to do test wall breakers to make sure they actually get through the layer of wall and there's not a small bomb to take them out. With a multi-inferno, you probably have to freeze the multi-inferno. Otherwise, the multi will just take out your wall breakers incredibly easy. But the super wall breakers, although they are eight housing space, they are so much more reliable, particularly if you are doing a queen charge. So I would highly recommend the 
the super wall breakers on the outside of the base. They're a little bit trickier to get in, and for eight housing space, you probably only want to break two to three layers. Then think about using the jump spells, but they are very reliable, and I would highly recommend using them. I actually did a video, The Wall Breakers Explained, which would give you a lot more in depth of how to use them, because like I said, they're exactly the same in the AI as the regular wall breaker. The Inferno Dragon was one of the latest super troops added to the game alongside the Super Witch, which I will get to next. Now, the Inferno Dragon is basically a baby dragon with a single target Inferno strapped to its back. So for that reason, you need to use it to its strengths against high HP buildings. And I had a couple of really good examples of the best tips for the Inferno Dragons in my reveal video. So I'm actually going to use that footage because the example Examples were great and perfectly aligned to this video. Now, I think there are two very clear, fantastic uses for the Inferno Dragons. The first one being having them in your defensive clan castle. This might cause the Queen's ability to be burnt, but think about as well if the Queen was also getting damaged by the defenses. Irrespective of the amount of defenses, though, you are going to have to commit something to the Inferno Baby Dragons on defense. Even even if that is just a freeze spell to reset the charging ability and protect your queen's ability. But if there are a lot of other defenses shooting at your queen, it might be that you need to use a rage spell as well, but you have to consider the infernal dragons on defense. The other main use that I see for the infernal dragon is to ensure you take out the town hall. Now, this could be particularly good on ring style bases where you can just focus on taking out the outside and just send a couple of Inferno Dragons into the town hall. Now, you do have to be careful of black bombs, so you might want to send two of them in, and also you might have to commit a freeze spell depending on if there's any defenses around. However, the Inferno Dragon can indeed get through that town hall no problem because it will be able to do an incredible amount of DPS once it has charged up its attack. Finally, we have the Super Witches. Now, the Super Witches are incredibly difficult to use. They have 40 housing space and they house one big boy. So the big boy is the one single skeleton that is spawned and it is similar in hit points to a super giant. The super witch, although it's 40 housing space, actually does approximately twice the amount of damage as a regular witch. So that is the difference maker. Now, the best example I can give you is of this one from the qualifiers where Eve check was able to take out a max town hall 13 using the super witches the one thing i would say is that the super witches can time fail you have to only take around about four super witches because they are 40 housing space that is 160 in total if you have four of them you need healers behind the super witches to get that value so you are not going to have many troops this is why eve check used a grand warden walk initially in his attack and also has some cleanup troops but the reason that the super witches can be useful in the base itself is if they have a large open space in the core they can actually get in there and tie a lot of defenses. It might be that the scatter shot are very difficult to path to if you are using the yetis and this means that the big boys and the super witches with the healers because you've only got four of them they tend to stand together so you're healing a lot of them together they will be able to tank that scatter shot all day long. A couple of other tips to consider with the Super Witches are that you don't really have to worry about the Giga Bomb at Town Hall 12 or 13 because the Big Boy and the Super Witches, they can get through that incredibly easily. So your Grand Warden's ability can be used in the core. Multi-target Infernos are probably the best thing to go up against, despite that being the worst for a regular witch. 
you can get through a single target inferno but you've just got to know that that is the case and similar to what we discussed with the super giants and the hghb you're using the super witches in the core to take out the core and tank everything surrounding the base with hog riders or the royal champion that is what has been found to be the best use of the super witches so far and the best tip that i can give you using them to tank big open spaces where the scatter shots are difficult to get to and you are mitigating the splash because they are massive they have all of the hit points surround the base with the hogs and the royal champion now if you do want to see my video where we gave a tip for every single troop in the game i'm going to link it right on your screen here alongside the subscribe button i bring educational entertaining content so be sure to subscribe but i will catch you guys in the next one take care